Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The fellas are heading to the Big 12 where there has just been some unreal college football games as TCU goes on the road to West Virginia. Obviously a very tough place to play. Last time I bet on a team going on the road to West Virginia was Baylor. We lost. They play really well at home. Now that being said, this West Virginia team and West Virginia fans who uh, you guys have been absolutely awesome with the support. By the way, we did summer scouting on you guys. Ton of great feedback. The most frustrating part about this West Virginia team has to be just the inconsistency. You look at their schedule, they looked awesome against Baylor. They looked awesome against Virginia Tech. And then they go on the road to Texas. They go on the road to Texas Tech. And they look like a 100% different team. Neil Brown, the highs of this team are extremely impressive. But the lows are very low. And quite frankly, they just aren't competitive. You never really know what you're going to get in the Big 12. But I am a huge fan of this TCU Horn Frogs team. Before we get into the matchup, though, I think I just want to say thank you guys for the support you guys have shown the channel. If you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We talk a lot of Big 12 football. I've been a fan of this TCU team, made some money on them, and I'm excited to get into it. Let's start with TCU. I mean, they're the undefeated team. They're a top 10 team in the country. A lot of people on Twitter are saying, I still don't know if TCU is still any good. I mean, they've pretty much in the last five weeks had some extremely impressive wins. I don't know if you can find another team with as explosive of an offense. They go on the road to Kansas. They take care of business. They beat an Oklahoma team. They go and play the Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Very, very impressive wins. And, yeah, I get sometimes it wasn't always pretty, but this offense can score a lot, and they can score very, very fast. And on the defensive side of the ball, I think they're a lot better than people give them credit for. And let's start with there. This West Virginia team on offense with JT Daniels can look – very, very good. But against Texas Tech, it looks very, very bad. And that, I think, a kind of a product of what we've been talking about. This West Virginia team is not very consistent. JT Daniels, those three interceptions on the road at Texas Tech. What I'm seeing from this TCU team is they like to rush three, drop eight, throw, they like take away some of those passing lanes. And they have some DBs who can really make good plays on the ball. You guys know how I feel about guys like Hodges Tomlinson in the back end. TCU averaging over one and a half takeaways per game. I expect this to kind of be a factor in this game. They're very stingy against a run for only running a three-man front. They have linebackers who can come up and tackle like the best of them. Johnny Hodges, the transfer from Navy, D. Winters, Jamoy Hodge, guys who can go sideline to sideline, make plays in space. I don't think West Virginia will be able to run the football very effectively against this TCU team. And I think a lot of the emphasis and a lot of the success West Virginia will have will be through the air. Now, can JT Daniels rebound from a very, very rough performance and make it happen against TCU at home? That's probably the story of this game. Now, TCU on the offensive side of the football, it's this offense is one of the more fun offenses to watch. It starts with Max Duggan, who didn't even win the job coming into the summer. I was, I'll was i put my hand up and say I was straight up wrong. I wanted to see Chandler Morris. I thought he'd be more, more of an asset in this spread offense that Sonny Dykes likes to run. Max Duggan and what he's done, not only through the air, but with his legs. And you always knew Max Duggan was a competitor, really, really tough football player. But when you see him get an open field, he can turn on the Jets and run extremely hard. Like, again, it's not always pretty with him, but he just moves the chains. And that's something that kind of gets overlooked in college football. You kind of get obsessed with those really, really pretty passes that Max Duggan can do. But what's really special about Max Duggan is he's just kind of a winner. He's a gamer and he, he moves the chains. And when they need points, Max Duggan leads into points. But through the air, he's been extremely efficient, averaging a 69% completion percentage, 19 touchdowns, only turning the ball over once with one interception. The story of this TCU team, though, I really do think is the offensive talent around Max Duggan. As good as Max Duggan has been, the run game has been phenomenal. Kendra Miller, outside of Bijan Robinson, you can make a strong argument. He's one of the best running backs in the Big 12. Or in the country, Amari DiMicardo is also very, very good. Both of those guys averaging over six yards per carry. You can also throw Homani Bailey in there as well. It's a running back room that is very deep, and they run the ball extremely hard. But Kendra Miller, the bell cow of that offense, is really running the football really well. And then you look at the playmakers on the outside. It starts with Quentin Johnson. This is a guy that we've talked about in the summers. He's my number one wide receiver on the draft board. I think this guy, the, the, the talent that he has – going up and making plays on the football is great. But what I think really separates him is he's a 6'4 guy that has some serious straight line speed. 
but he also creates a, a tremendous amount of separation. One of the most quarterback friendly wide receivers in the country. He's going to get open. He's a big target to hit. And Max Duggan has been using him the last couple of weeks. When previewing that Kansas game a couple of weeks ago, Quentin Johnson was third in the team receiving yards. I mean, Darius Davis, uh, Tay Barber were kind of the, the workhorses in that in, in the wide receiver room. And I said, Quentin Johnson is the secret weapon right now. Like they TCU hasn't even tapped into Quentin Johnson that much. And they're still putting up points. The last couple of weeks, they've gotten to Quinston Johnson, and he's been one of the best players in the country throughout the last three weeks. This dude is really special. You combine that with a guy like Darius Davis, who has probably one of the fastest football players in the whole entire country. Jared Wiley stepping up at that big tight end spot. I really like how this offense works. You kind of, if you think about that wide receiver room like a basketball court, you have like the big power forward type LeBron James guy like Quentin Johnson, who's your alpha but you have some guys who are really, really good in space and making people miss. And then you have some of those big targets like Jared Wiley over the middle of the field. It's a really well-rounded offense with a strong offensive line and a quarterback in Max Duggan that really gets the job done. And again, it's not always the prettiest, but he makes it happen. This offense is scoring pretty much at will 44 points per game on defense. They're not as solid, but again, TCU runs really fast. Their defense has to be on the field a decent amount. I don't think they're as bad as some of those power numbers show. Like you look at the efficiency that teams have, they're not being, I mean, only a 53% completion percentage for opposing quarterbacks, only 3.8 yards per carry. Yeah, they give up some points, but they're pretty, pretty efficient and pretty darn good defense. Now, the key for this TCU team is not giving up the explosive plays. Forcing defense, that's kind of your goal when you're running that three, uh, three, three, five. Keep everything in front of you. Make teams drive the length of the field and score touchdowns on you. Try to blow your back in the red zone. West Virginia has hit some explosive plays with guys like Bryce Ford Weed and right with guys like Caden Prey there. If TCU can limit those big plays like they didn't do a very good job of in the first half against Kansas State, I really like TCU to cover this game. They're coming into Morgantown as seven point favorites. I like that number. Again, this is a TCU team that you just got to trust. They've been great against the spread all year. West Virginia, on the other hand, a very hard team to trust. They just, you never know what you're going to get out of them. Neil Brown probably becoming on the hot seat. I know a lot of West Virginia fans are saying they want at least a seven, eight, nine win season for Neil Brown to comfortably kind of take over for next year. We're going to see if that's going to happen. The schedule does not get any easier for West Virginia. I think this is a massive game for West Virginia, but it's a very big game for TCU. I mean, this is the first time in a very long time they found themselves in the driver's seat of the Big 12 potentially college football playoff um, appearance as well. Very, very big game for Sonny Dykes in his first year at TCU. I cannot wait for it. Anytime you watch a Big 12 game, it is very exciting. I'm laying the points with TCU as the road favorite. Again, it comes down to what offense and what team do you trust more. TCU has showed the last couple of weeks that when the game is close and you need to make a play, TCU is going to make that play. West Virginia, you're not really sure if you can say the same thing. Taking TCU with the points and again, that's going to do it for the preview. If you guys do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We really do appreciate y'all, and we will talk to you guys later. Peace.